Uh, so merci, merci beaucoup. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Uh, I think there is a, you've already seen that there, is, there will be a very good mix of people from uh, interesting in the same subject, but coming from different, with different backgrounds. So it will be a very exciting uh, program. Um, so I decided to do uh, something which will be a, a mix of old and new in some sense. Uh, old but not for everybody in the, the audience because I see many many young faces so things we did over the past let's say 10 years about uh, um, understanding kinetic Monte Carlo models starting from Langevin and over the Langevin dynamics and then I will finish this talk uh, the second part of the talk on something which is uh, which is more recent something we did uh, with Panos Parpas uh, from Imperial College about uh, uh, some kind of new algorithm to find saddle points. And I would be interested in the uh, feedback about this. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, we don't know how far it will go and if it's really new or whatever. So um, please do not hesitate to, to interact with me on that. So on the first part from Langevin to KMT is a, is a joint work with in particular Dorian Le Potrec and Boris Nexus. Um, so Dorian is in Nantes now, and Boris is in the uh, University de Clermont-Auvergne. So let me um, see if it works. Um, alors, what's the problem? Excuse-moi, non, mais j'ai plus de jeu. Ça va, c'est carrément bloqué. So one sec. Um, I don't know why I don't have any. Bon, good. Um, yeah. So maybe a very general um, introduction to molecular dynamics, uh, which is about simulating the matter at the atomistic scale to, to try to get some macroscopic properties from the microscopic ingredients we put in. So the, the, the idea is really to replace some kind of ex some experiment or to maybe interpret experiments with computers. Uh, so it has, of course, many applications, biology, chemistry, material science. We've already seen a bunch of applications in the uh, flash talk this morning. Um, and um, so as an applied mathematician, I'm, I'm interested in, uh, say, challenges which can be, inter which can be formalized in, 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 in mathematics, in terms of in mathematical terms. And um, there are, in my opinion, three main you know, subjects. One, which is about improving the modeling, and in particular, the force fields. Uh, uh, in the background, there is this question of coarse graining. Uh, there is a kind of ideal force field, uh, which would be obtained from ab initio calculations. And the idea is to try to find some good uh, representation of this ideal force field. And in particular, when you, it comes to, to model polarizability or water, it's not clear yet how to do this in a, in a, in a, in a faithful uh, uh, way. There is then a, a question, which is even if you have a good model, it may be difficult to sample uh, quantities of interest. So it's sampling problems. It could be sampling the boltzmann gibbs measure. It could be sampling PAPs, okay? And both are, uh, have, have uh, the, the, their specific difficulties. And then there is this maybe new field, which is about uh, how to incorporate more and more data. And uh, there are new things, uh, there are new questions coming from uh, uh, in, in this third subject. And here I, uh, I like to start uh, t my talk with uh, this uh, nice picture from uh, Danny Perez, um, uh, which is about uh, one of the numerical challenge that we face in MD, in molecular dynamics. So on the X axis, you have the time scale that you can reach with, uh, let's say, a naive molecular dynamics simulations. For people who don't know what is in details MD, I will come back to that later on, but say it's a way to simulate the matter at the atomistic scale, and you, it's difficult to, to reach uh, microseconds, let's say. Okay, uh, and on the other hand, you have here on the y axis the number of atoms that you can simulate. And there are two blue colors depending on the size of the computer you can access. Okay, so in Los Alamos, you can have big computers, so you can go from beta scale to exascale. And this allows you to uh, increase the number of atoms. Okay, it's easy because, well, it's easy. You can do it because you can say quite easily parallelize the computation of the interaction uh, force field, okay? Um, but on the other hand, 
it's very difficult to parallelize time because it's sequential in nature. And this explains why you have this barrier in some sense. At least with naive algorithms, um, you cannot go beyond this uh, by just using naive algorithm on parallel computers as they are uh, given to you. So you have to, to think about algorithms to, to, to break this uh, barrier. Um, because uh, typically, maybe I should mention that, many, many uh, uh, problems uh, in practice actually occurs on timescales which are much larger than this uh, microsecond, okay? So here, here, here are a few examples of hot topics in mathematics for MD. So today I will really talk about metastable dynamics on complex imaginal case, but I would like to mention some problems we've been working on or people are working on so that uh, you can ask questions and interact. Uh, so one is about the sampling of reactive trajectories. So it's really a situation where you have two metastable states and you really want to understand the details of how you go from one metastable state to another one, okay? So from reactant to product or from uh, the ligand in the pocket of the protein uh, to the situation where the ligand is out of the pocket, so the unbinding process. So this is one subject where people have been working a lot and it's a rare event uh, sampling problem. I put here a few names of people who've been working on that. Um, another question which appears a lot in MD is how to sample measures, but with constraints. So on the manifold, these constraints may come from uh, molecular constraints or it may, it may come also from uh, when you do thermodynamic integrations, you, you put constraints because you have a, a collective variable and you would like to sample the configurations at the fixed value of the collective variable. So there is this question also which, which has been looked at. Yes. So. <coughs> so it's not like a phase transition or something really <laughs> sharp like that. So it's just that you, the, the, the time scale that you, that you have to use at the atomistic scale is the femtosecond, 10 to the minus 15. And since you have to do things sequentially, okay, uh, um, I mean by at least naive algorithms, you cannot do more than a certain number of time steps typically, and that's the typical number of time steps that you can do which brings you there, okay? So that's nothing more than that. It's not like a... Um, I, think, I think Danny set up this, you know, this, this barrier as a typical, uh, 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 the typical um, time, uh, yeah, time horizon that you can reach with current simulations on current computers for current applications. Okay, it's not something like a, a, a theorem which is behind. Um, there is one question, and uh, I think we've heard a, a, a few talks about, a uh, few flash talks about that, which is how to sample non-equilibrium stationary states. So, in, in the situation where you have a, a force which is not a gradient, a non-conservative force. And you would like to, to understand the stationary state of the system. There are many techniques which cannot be used in this context, uh, which have been devised for, uh, for uh, um, you know, uh, equilibrium uh, steady state calculations. So uh, there, are, there, are, there are a few questions going on there. Um, there is the question of improving the force field. I think we've heard also uh, one flash talk about that. And there is the general question of coarse graining, but you do a coarse grain, but you keep the dynamics correct. So how to do effective dynamics, how to do uh, projection operator techniques, Morris Van Fick techniques in order to find good projection of the dynamics itself, okay? Um, so on all these, these are you know, uh, hot topics. Uh, I probably have forgotten many names here, so sorry for, uh, for, for, for that. But that's at least how, uh, is, is, is some kind of question that we're interested in. And here I will, I will talk about um, metastability. Uh, specifically, and this is a small picture of what I mean by that. So it's, this is a, a free energy landscape, so a, a, a projection of, the, uh, of a high dimensional land energy on a few collective variables. So we don't really care about what it is about here. The only thing I would like to, to, to emphasize is that what you observe is that you observe valleys which are separated by uh, quite flat regions. And um, when you look at this, um, you, you realize that your dynamics will spend a lot of time in this, in this uh, low free energy minima before hopping to another one. And so it's quite natural to, to ask yourself, 
is it possible to approximate the original dynamics, which is in high dimension, complex, by just a jump process in a finite state space, which will tell you, I'm stuck here. This is how long I will remain here, and this will be the next state. Okay. Of course, we will be probabilistic, which means that you will have to draw a random time, and you will have to draw the next DVD state. So these are Markov state models, or the jump process from a mathematical viewpoint. It's also called a kinetic Monte Carlo model. And if you are able to find a good model uh, like that, it's of course much more efficient because you, you just have to draw two quantities, a time on, a, on, a, on the next DVD state. And, and so you can jump very easily between the different. So, so there is a, a, a big question, which is, can we use kinetic Monte Carlo to model the evolution of atomistic system? Okay. And the, the answer will be yes, but in some sense, so it will be a correct, but in some limiting regime, okay, under some assumptions. And there are many algorithms which actually, actually use the fact that there is a KMC model in the background, which is true, and that you can use in order to precondition, if you want, or to do some, some kind of uh, um, prediction, predictor corrector algorithms, if you're making analysis viewpoint, uh, to correct from the, uh, uh, the, 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 um, the errors which are introduced by the KMC and to go back to the Lorentz-Bahn dynamics, which will be the truth for us, okay? Which will be like the, the ground truth. So, uh, and these are the, uh, the accelerated dynamics algorithms introduced by, uh, in particular, by uh, Arthur Walter, Danny Perez, and Tom has a lot of contribution to this direction. Um, so let me, go into the details of these two models. So, so we have two models, one which will be the ground truth, which will be the Langevin, or overdump Langevin, when we cannot handle the Langevin. And there will be another model, which will be the kinetic Monte Carlo model, okay, KMC. Both of them will rely on this potential energy function that I was mentioning before, which will be given to us, and I will not discuss here in this talk, the accuracy of this model, okay, V is perfect, okay which is, of course, not true in many cases, but um, in particular for biological applications, it's, it's very difficult to have a very good V. But uh, for chemistry, it's not the same. I mean, uh, you can do sometimes qu quite good approximation, uh, quite good uh, ab initio molecular dynamic simulation. So going back to quantum chemistry, but okay, let's say V is given to you, okay? It's in high dimensions. V is not three times the number of atoms. So this V will come into the picture in both these models, and we would like to relate the two, okay? That's the question we are, we are looking at. So let's start with the first kind of model, uh, which evolve the positions of all the atoms and the momenta of all the atoms, okay? So these are large, large vectors, okay? High dimensional vectors. Uh, the first equation is nothing but the derivative of the, of the position is inverse of mass by momenta, so it's, uh, velocity, and the second one is the derivative of the momenta is the force minus gravity, and then you have these two terms, which model the fact that you have a system at fixed temperature, so you have a dissipative term minus gamma, the velocity, and you have a fluctuating uh, perturbation, and with these two terms, you can check that this Langevin dynamics is, uh, at least under some assumption, quite natural assumption, to ergodic with respect to Boltzmann-Gibbs measure, okay, so in particular in the each direction, it samples the, the Boltzmann measure. So again, this will be the ground truth for us, even for the dynamics, okay? And we can discuss that, okay? That's not, uh, but it will be given to us, and that will be what, would you, what you would like to simulate over very long time to get access to what you are interested in, transition time, uh, or some averages with respect to Boltzmann by doing uh, an average over time. There is a simplification of this, which is obtained by when you send gamma to infinity on the rescale time, or when you send the mass to zero also, which is called the overdump Langevin dynamics. So gamma is a dumping parameter. So we, when we say overdump, it's really the gamma goes to infinity limit that we have in mind. And it's a, a dynamics where essentially the momenta are at, always at equilibrium, so they disappear from the, from the dynamics, and you only have the dynamics over the positions, okay? So it's a steepest descent plus noise, okay? Like this. So it's a uh, gradient perturbed by noise. Uh, and again, it's ergodic with respect to that, okay? So I was mentioning the difficulty of, of 
simulating directly in dynamics uh, on, on the slide where I had these uh, pictures by Danny. When you want to simulate this on your computer, you have to use a time step which is sufficiently small in order to at least integrate the Hamilton dynamics, so the one that you would obtain without the gamma, if gamma is equal to zero here. And it leaves you to, uh, with typical, uh, uh, you know, covalent bonds um, vibrations, it leaves you to a time step which is of the order of 10 per second. Okay? And as I mentioned before, the, the, the transitions between metastable states occurs on much larger time scales. So it means that in practice, these dynamics are metastable. So the, the system remains trapped in some metastable region okay, for ages. And this is the problem that you have to face when you want to simulate these dynamics over a very long time. Okay? You have a, a stability constraint which forces uh, forces you to, to, uh, to use a, a very small time step compared to the time horizon you are interested in. And this is a small picture of, of one, what we mean by metastability. So this is a, a metastability maybe which is quite natural in, in the sense that it's uh, what you, uh, you have when you do hiking. I think you've heard about hiking in the mountains. Okay? You, you, these are the level sets of the potential energy function to do the hike, for example. And uh, when you want to go from this valley to this other valley, you have to climb up to a saddle point, okay? A collapse, okay? And so this creates metastability in the sense that when I use the dynamics I've presented before over this 2D, very simple 2D landscape, you see this kind of metastable signal. This is time, and this is the X coordinate. So you see that you remain here, around there, before going there. And this is metastability uh, due to energetic barriers. There are also in, uh, entropic barriers. So here you have a, a, a potential uh, which is such that to go from the left to the right, you don't need to climb uh, over level sets of the potential energy, but you have to find your way to a very narrow uh, exit. Okay, And so here's a small parameter if you want would be the, 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 the size of this window. And again, you have this metastable you know, uh, feature. So in practice, you are in high dimension. You have a mix of these two, okay, of these two entropic and energetic barriers. You don't know exactly where they are, and so it, yeah, this creates the difficulty of metastability: the fact that it will take a long time to leave a metastable state. Okay. So energetic entropic barriers. Okay, the the, the, the picture is clear, and I have uh, this very. Uh, 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 this very um, simple case that I propose to Tom and Manon to look at, maybe it's too simple for them, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Noe has a, uh, has a, uh, 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 Noe, ah, okay, it's not even is So these are, these are seven atoms, and Noe, I think, has a, has a, has a program in Julia to, to simulate this, this, this uh, little problem. So you have seven atoms, and they all interact with a sum of all the pairs uh, uh, of a potential which depends on the distance between two atoms. Okay? And what is this potential? It's the Lennard Jones potential, which is a, a potential which is repulsive for small length, and it has a, an equilibrium distance, and then it's flat. So it means that the, when the atoms are further apart, are far apart, uh, they do not interact at all. Okay? The force is zero. And so you, you, so this is the, la the distance, and this is like a, and the total V of Q1 up to Q7 is a sum of all Ij of a V of Qi minus Qj. Okay, that's a very simple uh, model. And already it's simple, but it's <laughs> already you see what you would like to look at. You see metastability in the sense that you see that I in the, Bull I norm, you see that you stay for some time in some states and then you jump to another state, okay? And uh, so this is the energy as a function of time. One way to formalize this is for each time step, you just do a steepest descent and you end up in a local minimum of this energy landscape, okay? And um, you stay there for a very long time. So you see here uh, the energy uh, for this, okay? Uh, and so you see that the, this long plateau uh, is, is uh, manifestation of the fact that you, you, you stay for a very long time stuck in some metastable state. You see that sometimes it's not for a long time. You see that here you just jumped and, go, and went back. So maybe this is not a jump in a kinetic Monte Carlo-like. Uh, uh, so I will come back to this. 
but uh, many times you, you, you're just simulating nothing. I mean, here you, you are basically wasting computer time, okay? Because nothing happens. Okay, the picture is clear here. So when you, when you see this kind of, 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 um, of dynamics, you understand what, why people would like to do. They would like to simulate this, this so-called state-to-state dynamics in a very efficient way, okay? So if, it, if, if we were able to directly obtain that, without doing the details of uh, what happens within the well, within a local minimum, that would be great. I mean, from a modeling and computational viewpoint. Okay, let's go, let's go back to, 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 uh, to, the, to, to, the, to that. So this is a, these are the four local minima that you are you know, wandering around uh, with, with your dynamics. So, uh, in order to formalize a little bit what's going on, uh, so I will concentrate on the overdone Langevin dynamics, and I will explain what it can be done uh, easily for the, well, easily, what can also be done for the Langevin dynamics, and what for the moment we have not done on the Langevin dynamics. So let's focus on this, the overdone. Um, so what ha what is going on is that, so you have, you have a state, okay, and it takes ages to leave the state, okay? So for example, you can think of a state and let's, that will be the focus of this talk, as the basin of attraction of one of the local minima of B, okay? So you have many local minima, in this case, you see, up to renumbering, okay? You have four of them, okay? And so this creates a, a, a partition of your state space, okay? You start from a point, you use deepest distance, you end up in a local minima. And um, so let's consider one of these states, so one of the basin of attraction, and let's look at the time it will take on the point where I leave the, um, this state, okay? So this to S is a stopping time. It's the first time I leave S, starting in S, and XTS is the first exit point. And so when I simulate these dynamics, uh, I'm actually, at the end of the day, simulating one sample of this, okay? It's one exit. Let's have a look at in a Jeff Markov model, what is this to S X to S, okay? And this is what I do now. So this is the, the second model. In a kinetic Monte Carlo or Markov state model, so this is again just a jumped model, what you do is that you have your state S here, okay? You divide your boundary into, uh, uh, you make a partition into, into sets, okay? And these sets are uh, associated with a transition to another, let's say, basin of attraction, another neighboring basin of attraction, okay? So here you have four of them. And then what you do is that you associate to each of these possible exits a rate, okay? So you would have a K1, K2, K3, K4, okay? And then you will see that the exit even from this in a KMC model is very easy to sample because what you do is that you draw a random variable which is exponential with parameters of sum of the kj to get the exit time, okay? And independently from that, you draw uh, the exit region, so for which part of the boundary you will live, with a, a, a random variable which is integer valued. So here we value in one, two, three, four. And the probability to, to be equal to i is ki over the sum of the kj. So that's, uh, so the, the larger the rate, the more likely is the exit, okay, through this region. And moreover, the two are independent, okay? So you understand that if this model is correct, and if you know the ki, it's very easy to, to sample the exit region, okay? It's just two random numbers. So what are the k's? Uh, the k's are relative to the, to the v, okay? And this is where uh, I will concentrate on energetic bias here, okay? Because otherwise this formula doesn't make sense. Okay, there is a question of what is the equivalent of this for entropic bias, which is something we are working on at the moment. Uh, but uh, for energetic bias, at least, there is a natural way to parameterize this rate, okay? And uh, the formulas are given by the earring kramer uh, formulas, or uh, are in close. The rate through to leave to the GF uh, part of the boundary is a prefactor time exponential minus beta, so beta is one over the KT, one over the constant, constant temperature, times the difference of the potential energy at a point on, the, uh, on this part, which is uh, come back ZJ, and the, the energy at the glo global minimum in S, okay? So which is the basic attraction. 
So what is in ZJ? Z ZJ is the minimum over this part of the boundary of the potential. So it's a saddle point. Okay, so when you have a backing of attraction, and you turn a minimum on the boundary, you have a, a saddle point of your potential energy. Okay. Um, so you take your potential to, to, to sum up, you have your potential energy V, you take all the local minima, okay, you take all the basin of attractions, and on the boundaries of, this, of the basin of attractions, you take the saddle points, okay, you introduce rates to go uh, to live through each of these saddle points, which are there, okay, and then you are able to very easily sample the exit event using the, the algorithm of Kinetic, okay, which is nothing but a jump Markov model with, with uh, this KJ's uh, parameter value switch. So now the question is that we have two ways to model the exit from S, one which is given by the, say, the overdump Langevin, one which is given by the kinetic Monte Carlo model. Can we say that they are related? Okay. Can we say that one is an approximation of the other? And in which regime? Okay. Okay, is the question clear? Okay. So the question here is really, how to justify your model, which is the KMC model, first, and second, how to justify the use of Ewing Kramer's laws to parameterize this model. Okay, that's the two questions we have. And actually, we will answer this in, in two steps. One, which is, is there a KMC model which is correct for some rate, okay, that I don't know, okay? And this first step will be very general. It will, it will apply to energetic, entropic barriers, Langevin, overdump, Langevin dynamics, basically any Markov dynamics. Okay. And then the second step is about showing that the rates that you have obtained are in, can indeed be approximated by the ring Kramer's laws. And this will require energetic barriers, small temperature, and overdump Langevin, at least for the moment. Okay, that's the only setting in which we are able to, to prove it. The first two assumptions are quite natural. The last one, we should be able to do Langevin, okay, but uh, it's not done for the moment. So let me go through these two steps. The first one is why a kinetic Monte Carlo model is correct okay, to, 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 to model the exit event. And this will require to introduce the quasi-stationary distribution. So it's, a, it's a, uh, 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 I will explain what it means, but basically it's, it's a formalization of the fact that since you remain trapped for a very long time in a state, Basically, you forget the way you enter the state and you reach some kind of local equilibrium. And this, is, this will be the theory. Okay. So let me go through that. Maybe I, I start with the second, um, the second part of the slide. So there exists a distribution which is called the QSD. So it's a priority distribution supported in a state S, whatever the state, okay? Which is such that if you start in the state and if you look at the law at time t, so this curly L is for low. The low at time t condition to the fact that little t is smaller than the exit time. So it means that you've been trapped from zero to little t in S. Then you send t to infinity and you obtain this mu. Okay. So this is a way, I mean, if you think about it, this is a way to formalize the fact that you, you, you are in a state, okay? You enter the state S and you've been trapped for a long time, okay? For a long time means that you reach this before leaving, okay? And this is a way to formalize metastability or metastable exit. A metastable exit is, a, is, a, is an exit which is such that you reach this mu before leaving, okay? Up to epsilon if you want, if you want to formalize things, things uh, uh, precisely. And so this mu is like a, a, a local equilibrium in the sense that, and I go to the first part of the slide, if you start on the new, and if you go, so it means that you start in S under this specific quasi stationary distribution, and you go for some time, okay, little t, conditionally of the fact that you remain trapped in S from zero to t, you still on the new, okay? So if you forget the conditioning, it's really the definition of a, of a stationary measure, okay? But here there is this conditioning, so it's a kind of local equilibrium, if you want, stationary measure for the conditioned process, if you want, okay? So that's a, uh, that's what the way we formalize the fact that you've been trapped for, for, for a long time in, in the domain, okay? Um, so why is this QSD very useful to justify your KMC model? Because of two properties which 
are so easy to prove that I put it on the side here, it's two lines each time. So, so if you've been trapped for a sufficiently long time, you're close to mu. So let's say we are at mu. And let's look at the exit time starting from mu. Okay, so it means at the exit even, sorry. So first exit time on second exit time, okay? So first the exit time is exponentially distributed. And again here, I have assumed nothing except the existence of the QSD. So I don't need small temperature. I don't need, uh, you know, uh, an energetic trap. It's two, whatever, uh, S and uh, some dynamics, as soon as you have a field. So why is this true? You take two little s on t and you look at the probability starting from u to leave after a time s plus t. And you condition by the fact that you leave after s. Okay, so this equality is obvious from conditioning formula. What is going on here? By a Markov property at time s, what is going on is that you've been trapped from zero to s, okay? And so it means that at time s, you still on the new, okay? So if you ask yourself in the future, Okay, um, how long will I remain? It's the same as starting from new, okay? Asking yourself how long will I remain, but uh, forgetting about the S which is there, okay? okay? It's just a Markov property, okay? You bring from zero to S trapped. So starting from S, uh, in the future, you will live uh, with the same law as, uh, as before starting from new, okay? And so here you recognize the, uh, the, the, the functional, if you want, equality, which is uh, uh, for which uh, the solution is an exponential, okay? And so it tells you that this probability that mu is other than QS other than the exponential minus lambda t for some lambda, okay? And so it means, it means that it's pretty good, okay? And you can do the same to prove that the exit time, the exit point, sorry, is independent of the exit time. So I just let you read. It's exactly the same argument, okay? You start from the joint distribution and you end up with a product which is the signature of independent random variable. And so if you take this and you compute these guys, so you say, no, let me introduce kj, which is the probability starting from mu that I leave through dsj, divided by the expectation starting from mu of the exit time. You put these kjs in my, in this slide, so in, in, in this KMT model, and you will check that with this kj, the uh, exit even that you will simulate with the KMT model is exactly the same as the one that you will obtain, okay, statistically, with uh, the dynamic, which is uh, behind this Xt, so overdump, or Langevin, or whatever Markov process for which you've been able to prove there is a QSD, okay? So it's a very general approach, okay, which tells you a KMT model is correct for some rates. So again, it's very general. It doesn't require any assumptions about the origin of metastability. It can be applied in particular to non-reversible dynamics, for example, for which we don't know exactly what are hearing tremors laws. And uh, there are works by Ju uh, Julien about that. Uh, so this is the origin, Julien. Um, it also applies to Langevin dynamics. Uh, Moad and, and, uh, with, with Moad Ramil and Julien Rainier, we, we've worked on that. And there is also a, a in parallel work done by uh, Arnaud, Guilin, Boris Mektou, Wu, uh, and also by Champagne, Jules Monet. Um, so it's, uh, in, in the Langevin, I mean, maybe one word is that you work in a domain which is bounded in positions times RD for the velocity. So it's a cylindrical domain. So this means that you don't have compactness on its hypolytic dynamics. So you have to deal with some uh, additional problems compared to over the Langevin, but it works. There is a QSD. And some algorithms, such as the parallel replica or the par parallel trajectory slicing, I think you will, heard, uh, you will hear about it uh, in, in the three weeks, uh, in the forthcoming weeks. Um, they only rely on the existence of a QSD. So it means that using this framework, you can only already justify accelerated dynamics algorithm. Okay? I will not go into the algorithm because you can ask Tom about them in, in, yeah, in the weekend. Okay, so now I have this, this um, algorithm, which is, uh, I mean, this KMT model, which is justified for some rates, and the question is, are the rates correct, okay? So, I mean, sorry, are the ra can the rates be approximated by the Ehring-Kramer system? Ah. 
So here, I will need to, um, to focus on overdump Langevin energetic barriers, and I will add the fact that I have, I'm working in the small Turkey regime, okay? These three additional assumptions compared to what I presented before. So this slide is just to tell you that when you want, when you ask yourself, I mean, uh, when, you, when, you, when you wonder about that, you have to, to, um, to introduce a, a spectral problem because uh, a, a QSD is, is actually a, a Nigel vector, okay? So, this U1 here, you see, is just the first eigenvector associated with the focal Planck operator associated with the uh, dynamics, so the overdump Langevin dynamics. And lambda one, or maybe minus lambda one, is the associated eigenvector, first eigenvector, okay? And if you take these two guys, you are able to write, at least uh, analytically, formulas for this Kj, okay? Why? So the U1 normalized is nothing but the QSD. Lambda one is nothing but the parameter of the, uh, of the exponential law. And the exit point distribution is essentially minus the normal derivative of U1 on the boundary. So U1 is a kind, it's a kind of flux, okay, to leave. Okay? So it means that you have a formula to write the Ki. On here, you can ask yourself, when I send the temperature to zero, can I prove that Ki goes to what I expect? And the short answer is yes. Uh, or, or already, so, 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 so this, so I can write a formula like that for the Langevin. Okay. Yes, yes, you can. You can write the formulas. Okay. The question is, can you go to some limit to go to the <laughs> But, but yes, it, yeah, this is quite uh, okay. And the short answer to the question, I mean, can we approximate this by uh, by uh, Irene Kramer's laws? Is that yes, you can under some assumptions. I will not go into them into the details of them because um, for the sake of time, and I would like to, to go to, to looking for some other points. But um, in the small total regime, you can show that you, you can indeed approximate the Ki by the formula I've shown before, okay, with the prefactor that you expect from Arrhenius laws, if you want, or Irene Kramer's laws. Um, let, me, let me just mention one thing because I will use it in, uh, in some minutes. I mean, this, the proof of that is based on what is called semi classical analysis in the PBD theory, which is uh, when you look at a, a, a problem like that, an elliptic problem, and you send the parameter which is in front of the Laplacian to zero. And this is exactly what people do when they look at the Schrodinger operator. There is an H bar here, and they send the H bar to zero to go from quantum to classical mechanics, okay? And basically, we use exactly, I mean, th the same kind of tools that has been developed in order to study the small H bar limit on the, on the Schrodinger, okay? To understand the small temperature regime on this uh, QSD problem, okay? And that's um, something I will go back in. Uh, so it's Related to Witten Laplacians, and, and I will go back to this in a, in a second. And I try will try to give you some uh, some uh, intuition of that. What is going on? Um, one word about I mean what we did. So what we looked at is really we looked at the exit event in the small temperature regime. Okay. So there are other techniques to do that. There are large deviations, for example. Okay, which are quite big, big, big uh, field in itself. Well, basi basically, you, you, you obtain results also, but you don't, you obtain results only on the log here of the, of, of these guys, okay? So you get this, but not the prefactor, okay? It's, uh, that's, uh, on the other hand, it's much more general. You can apply dark deviations to much more general settings than what we are doing, okay? There are PDE techniques also which have been developed in the same, um, you know, like, large deviation is more probabilistic in nature on the uh, PDE writing of this thing. And uh, let me mention, I mean, insist on the fact that it's a local approach that we have in, tr in, 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 in nature. So we are really looking at the exit event, not at the spectrum of the whole operator on the whole domain, for example, which is something which has been developed a lot by uh, uh, Bovier, uh, uh, Schutter, and, 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 and let's say, uh, yeah, German school. Um, and um, yeah, and, 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 and this, uh, this approach, I mean, using the spectrum of the whole operator, has also been used in order to, to compare KMC on Langevin in terms of the spectrum, okay? And there are, there are many uh, 
uh, works in, in this direction uh, I mentioned here. Bon, okay, I, I will go now to, so if you're lost, you can come back. Uh, so what we can retain from the first part of the talk is that we, if we were able to find all the local minima of a potential energy landscape on all the saddle points, and if we believe that a KMC model is correct with the Ehring Kramer flows, we could build a very efficient algorithm because we would simply make a graph between local minima with uh, uh, two local minima which are connected if you go from one to the other through one saddle point, okay? And you would parameterize the transition between these two local minima by using the Ehring Kramer flow, okay? So that would give you a, a way to simulate your system. It doesn't mean it's easy to, it's, it could be big graphs, okay? So there are people doing these big graphs like uh, David Wales in, in Cambridge, um, who is a, a specialist of this kind of, of problem. So, sorry. Yes, Joe. Yeah, assume that, yeah. But in practice, uh, in practice, uh, you have people who have spent years to do that, <laughs> and you have also, to be more, more more fair, you have also adaptive techniques where you maybe you don't have all of them, but you can discover new ones and add them, and you build the graph as simulation goes, which would be maybe more uh, realistic, let's say. But for the sake of um, presentation, <laughs> let's assume that you know everything, okay? So yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean. Yeah, yes, crucial. So the problem is indeed at the end of the day, how to find local minima and how to find saddle points. So how to find local minima, I think everybody in this room has an idea of how to do that. You take a point, you do a steepest descent, you will end up at a, lo at a local minima, okay? Except at some zero point, okay? Zero Lebeck measure for things, okay? So it's in some sense easy to find local minima. I put in between quotes because of course it depends on the initial conditions. I would like to find all of them, okay? but. There is an algorithm you can use, okay? No, 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 I don't want to sample that. I, I, want, I, I want to sample the dynamics. I want to sample the, so I don't want to sample the local minima. I want to sample the dynamics. So how, I, how I move from the local minima to the other one. For example, David is interested in how I will go from this guy to this guy. So what will be the list of local minima we visit to go from one to the other? How long it will take? So it's really about dynamics here. Okay, not about sampling only the local minima because otherwise you're right, okay? So I really need the saddle points then in order to understand the transitions, okay? So local minima are not enough. I need saddle points. So, and then the question which is quite natural, so how to find saddle points? Is there a kind of local a steepest descent to find saddle points, okay? That's the question I would like to ask now. In the Langevin or overdump Langevin is in the background, but it really I, I really have in mind KMC, Kinetic Monte Carlo. So I will have this graph, saddle points, earring Kramer flows, and I will, you know, find find all what I want on this model. Okay? Yes. Yeah, so the, the rate I would use this uh, this uh, this formula typically, okay. Yeah, so here I assume that it's correct. That's true. That's true. You can like for Markov state model, for example, for bio, um, if the rates are not given by that, but you would be able to, you would be able to. With only the, uh, let's say, the QSD uh, approximation in my language, you would be able to find the rate, okay? But, I mean, finding the saddle points, even in this context, would be important to actually build transitions, okay? so. So, so that's the question. So is there an equivalent to the steepest distance to locate saddle points? Okay, that's the one question. So, so what are the standard methods to find saddle points? There are two, two types of methods. One which are called double-ended methods. So I give you two local minima, I just uh, throw a rope between these two local minima, and I just do a steepest distance on the rope, okay? You I think you can see the picture, okay? So the names are nudge elastic band, string method. All these are numerical versions of the mountain path algorithm theorem, which tells you that you, when you do this, you will end up in some local minimum, okay? In some saddle points, sorry, somewhere. 
okay, along the path. The problem is that it depends on the initial path. Of, it's local in nature, okay? And, um, and you're not sure to converge, actually. There are, uh, numerically, you can show that it's not clear that it will converge. Okay? You have single-ended methods, so it means that you start from a point, and hopefully it will go to a certain point, okay? Um, a Newton method will do that, okay? The dimer, the arc, the gentle ascent dynamics, all these are single-ended methods. Again, they depend a lot on the starting point, and they only converge locally if you start not so far away from a, uh, from a, from a saddle point. Otherwise, you may, may be lost. Okay. They don't have this natural and um, very nice feature of people. This, if you start from anywhere, you go to a local minimum. How to, to, to recover this nice stuff? Um, so, what is the steepest descent? Typically, that I mean, we start with uh, what it does. So, you have steepest descent plus none. Okay. Why does it work? Can, let's let's take a PDE viewpoint. Okay, I, I come from PDE, so, so I often back <laughs> go back to PDE. So I take the Fokker-Planck equation associated to this, so which rules the evolution of the density. So it's solution to this. Okay, and this row concentrates on local minima of potential. Why? One way to understand it is to look at the spectrum of this operator, okay, and to look at the eigenvector where they do concentrate. Okay, if I do that, I should be able to see that I, I'm going to sort of to local minima. Sorry, and indeed, when you look at the spectrum of this guy, so you, I, I use Wheaton Laplacian, but I will not go into that. You can show that the eigenvalues are exponentially small, and the eigen functions they concentrate on local minima of b. And because I like very small simulations. Let me just show you what it go, what it does uh, on on a very simple uh, case. Alors ça je dirai. which is there. So you see, I just simulate the Fokker Planck on a two D. So this is maybe I should uh, show this. It's a it's a it's a two D uh, a two well potential in a, in a, in in two D. This potential here, two wells on the saddle point. And this is what the Fokker Planck equation does. By it goes to uh, two peaks uh, in each well. So you 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 you, you see. Since the eigenfunctions concentrate in local minima, of course, you, you see it in the Fokker Planck. So what would be great would be to get an equivalent of the Fokker Planck equation, but to find saddle points. On the, and uh, what on this you can do. So you can essentially take the gradient, if you want, of the Fokker Planck. So you will work on eigenforms, on one eigenform. So you will, go, you will work with vector valued functions. And on this vector valued PDE, you will show that the eigenvalues, there are as many small eigenvalues as you have saddle points, and they will concentrate. Yes. Alors, the Witten Laplacian um, is uh, a Laplacian where you take into account the fact that you have a potential energy in the background, which is not. So when you take V is equal to zero, a Witten Laplacian is just the, the Laplacian, hot Laplacian. Okay, so that's it. And when you introduce a, a, a distorted, if you want, differential with a potential V, you end up with the Witten Laplacian, uh, which has exactly the same spectrum as the operator L star, which I have here. Okay, so it's a way to look. Exactly. So if, uh, perfect. <laughs> that's exactly that. So it's a way to rewrite it as a Schrodinger operator and to make it. Symmetric on the L2 flat L2 space. And so you have these two properties. You have as many small eigenvalues as you have saddle points. And you have um, the eigenforms which concentrate on the saddle points. So maybe I show you what is going on on, a simple, on the simple test case that I've presented before. Hop. So this is now you have two, of course, you have two components. So now so it means that you have two plots. One for the first component and the second one for the second component. Okay, and I send the simulation. So I start the simulation. So what do you see? So first here, I would like to, to draw your attention to the y-axis here. So the second component goes to zero, ten to the minus twelve. So basically, this goes to zero. On the first component, it concentrates on the saddle point. It does what, what the theory tells you. Okay, but it's it's better maybe to see it. Okay, okay so that's. That's a good news. I mean, if we were able to simulate these uh, vector-valued 
uh, PDE, we should be able to locate server point. So now I would like to, I would like to go back to go backward to start from this PDE to find and to find a probabilistic interpretation which would allow me to do a simulation of the solution to this, but in high dimension. If you think of, you could say that the this this stochastic differential equation is a way to simulate this guy in high dimension. Okay, and I would like to find a probabilistic interpretation to the PDE I've just introduced here. Okay, again, it's vector values, and so phi is a vector, in order to, to simulate this on, on in high dimension, okay? And this, this, I mean, this slide tells you that there is a way to find, to write the solution of the PDE with a stochastic differential equation. So what is it? It's the same as before, but you add an additional equation on, uh, uh, if you want, the derivative of the stochastic flow, okay, with respect to the initial condition, if you want to see it uh, abstractly. And it's this formula, okay? And if I take the density of this guy, so it's a kappa of T x y, x is for x t, y is for y t. And if you integrate this with respect uh, in y for a fixed T x, you get a function which is vector valued, which is a solution to the PT. So now, I mean, you have a way to do it numerically on the computer. You just simulate these guys and make an, uh, an approximation of this is given by this average. So I do an average at a fixed value of x n, if you want, of the y n. Okay, and these 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 particles. I mean, there would be many particles. No, they should concentrate on the saddle point. Okay, and I don't have time to go into the details of the algorithm. But I finished with just a picture of what is going on. So you will see particles. They evolve. They start in the left well, and they. You, you see, they populate uh, at some point the saddle point, and the, they, 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 they finally go there. And what is the black arrow? The black arrow is the average of the yt, okay, over all the guys. Okay. So it does what we expect, and it not it doesn't work only in one in, in 2D. We did some experiments on uh, on vacancy diffusion, and maybe. To finish on the Leonard Holmes cluster, we were able to find, if you want, the I think first eleven saddle points uh, uh, by, by using this technique, um, and do this uh, make this kind of uh, small pictures of uh, uh, all the transition that we observe. Okay. Um, okay. So that's. I didn't tell you all the details of the algorithm. I think you have to do a reweighting strategy because otherwise you have uh, the you have a very bad value estimator, so you have to do some kind of reweighting. Any ways to do reweighting, we choose one. Okay, there may be other ways to do it. And um, if you think about uh, the parallel with uh, local minima, when you want to find all the local minima, typically what you use in practice is you use metadynamics, ABF, this kind of thing, where you perturb this steepest descent, first noise, by something which avoids going back to already visited local minima. We would like to adapt this to avoid going back to already visited saddle points. That would be natural. So how to do this free energy-like adaptive biosine technique in this context is something which could be of interest. I end up with these two references. So the first one is, is about you know, proving this uh, earring Kramer's law for the uh, rate of the KMC in the small temperature regime for all the dams. And the second one is about this uh, uh, Witten Laplacian uh, um, you know, a tool to locate index one saddle points. And um, with this, I thank you for your attention.